Warning, there are spoilers for the Star Wars and or series following this spoiler warning. Yeah. So if you haven't seen all episodes of the Cassian Andor show, up to and including episode 11, proceed with caution. I did a review and breakdown of Andor episode 11 the day after it aired. If you haven't watched my review, I'll link it in the description. But... In that video, I intentionally left out the bits with Mon Mothma and only touched briefly on the bit with Luthen Rael's assistant, Clea. Why? Because I thought those arcs deserved more time than a one-minute recap. So I guess one could call this my Episode 11 Breakdown and Review Part 2. Or not. I just wanted to dedicate an entire video to these two characters. What is contained in this video is something I've noticed over the past few episodes involving Mon Mothma, her daughter, and Clea. So, sit back, relax, and let's enjoy some Star Wars discussion. If you love Star Wars as much as I do, or you're just a casual fan wanting to talk about the greatest franchise ever created, then you've come to the right place, because Star Wars is all I talk about, and I upload new content, well, whenever I can. So if you have an interest or love for Star Wars, go on and hit that subscribe button and join this growing channel for deeper discussions, theories, and Star Wars lore. Each one of you is appreciated more than you know. I want to start with Mon Mothma and her daughter, then move on to Clea. After that, I'll talk about how they relate as characters and writing. So, Mon Mothma, what do we know about her from Star Wars Original Trilogy? She was only in Return of the Jedi, and we only saw her in one scene. And even then, she seemed like a caring leader, becoming visibly upset when commenting on the many Bothan spies who died to bring the Rebellion the plans for the second Death Star. And that caring has moved into her other reprisals of the character that we have seen in other Star Wars projects. Yes, I said projects, plural. She was in a deleted scene discussing the formation of a rebellion in Revenge of the Sith, and she was also in an arc of Star Wars Rebels, which I will discuss first. And now she is prominently featured in the Star Wars Andor series. So, yeah, Star Wars Rebels. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. There is a lot of Star Wars lore in that series. But if you don't want to watch it, I'll go ahead and spoil it for you now. The Empire is on the hunt for Mon Mothma. At the time of Rebels, she is a fugitive. Why? Well, there's the obvious. She's a Rebel sympathizer within the ranks of the Imperial Senate. That's pretty obvious. But there's more to it. The moment Mon Mothma became a fugitive from the Empire was two years prior to the events of Rogue One, a Star Wars story. What does that have to do with Andor, you ask? Well, the Mon Mothma conversation with Take Homa and Davos Golden, the seedy banker, takes place two years prior to Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Coincidence? I think not. We know something leads to Mon Mothma becoming a fugitive, and she will ultimately become knowingly involved in the Rebellion. So it's pretty safe to say she isn't going to take Davo Skaldin's deal, which is she would have to give up her daughter in order for Davo to fix the 400,000 credit discrepancy in her family's account. With not taking the deal, she will either be discovered by the Empire when they audit the account, or Davo will turn her in. And this will lead to Mon Mothma becoming a fugitive, as we see in Star Wars Rebels. But what will become of her family? Will her daughter and husband be imprisoned for her deeds in order to pull her out of hiding? Or is her husband an imperial sympathizer? We know Ma Mothma's daughter is closer to the husband, so maybe Perrin Firtha, that's the husband's name by the way, will give the Empire what they want. We see him being shady when it comes to his wife, and there's something really off about the guy if Ma Mothma doesn't trust him. Now, on to the interaction between Clea and Luthen. I skipped over her conversation with Luthen Rael as he was returning from his visit with Saul Guerrera because I thought this video would better suit it. And before I get into that a little deeper, I have made videos claiming Clea and Luthen may be Sith or other dark side users. A lot of people say it's impossible because of the rule of two. Only two Sith, a master and an apprentice. No more, no less. Other than Darth Bane creating that rule, we have seen it's a loose guideline for Sith structure. 
Count Dooku had Asajj Ventress as a pupil, albeit as an assassin. Darth Sidious had Darth Maul as an apprentice, while he himself was still an apprentice to Darth Plagueis. And Darth Maul had a Sith apprentice in Savage Opress when Maul was excommunicated from Darth Sidious, making Darth Maul and Savage Opress the first offshoot of the Rule of Two, while another master and apprentice existed in canon. Anyways, Tony Gilroy has stated that there are no Sith users in the Andor series, and that may be true from a certain point of view. What if Clea and Luthen are not revealed as Sith or other Force users in the first season of Andor? Then, what Tony Gilroy said becomes absolutely true. That brings me to the conversation between Luthen and Clea, as he was about to be creeped on by an Imperial patrol vessel. Luthen and Clea act very much like a master and apprentice. If we look at the dynamic between other masters and apprentices in Star Wars, and not just Sith, but also Jedi, we see the master as this calm, cool, and collected veteran that guides the young, ambitious mentee. In The Phantom Menace, we see that with both Darth Sidious' relationship to Darth Maul and Qui-Gon Jinn's relationship with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, we see that in Luthen Rael and Clea but in reverse. Clea seems calm and thinking ahead to what's next. While at often times, Luthen is emotional and losing his cool. Clea urges him to come home, while Luthen is more eager to take care of matters firsthand. Let's not forget what appears to be a lightsaber hilt in his possession. Also, there's the double-bladed red saber that extends from his ship. Now, I don't expect a big reveal in Season 1 of Andor, but this is more about Luthen and Clea's dynamic than them being Sith or fallen Jedi. But what about Clea? What makes me think she's a darksider? Simple. Look at her demeanor. She's usually looking at others from under her brow. That's a bit sinister, don't you think? She's manipulative, and she orders the hit on Cassian Andor. She also tells Vel Sartha that Vel is expendable, in not so many words. The conversation she has with Luthen also points to her being a bit more controlling of Luthen than an apprentice normally is. Maybe she's actually the master. Okay, I said I'll explain how Mon Mothma and Clea relate to each other as characters. Not that they have a relationship, but how these characters are connected in an inverse dynamic through the writing of the Andor series. As I mentioned, Clea is calm and collected, whereas Mon Mothma is constantly troubled. These two are polar opposites of one another. Mon Mothma takes risks, where that isn't something normal for someone trying to be covert, where Clea eliminates risks, or those seen as loose ends. Mon Mothma isn't willing to do everything possible for her cause, but Clea is, both while in hiding. Mon Mothma also puts her faith in people she should not be trusting. For example, take Homa. As he may seem trustworthy, do we think he would stand up to interrogation from the Imperial sources? Or would he sell Mon Mothma out? Clea is the opposite. She trusts no one. But these are just some observations I've had. I could be wrong, and I'm okay with that. I'm not going to get upset if Lucasfilm doesn't follow this guideline. It's not really a guideline, but follow this speculation. But I have two more points to make. As a side note, the Sith Stalker armor we see in Luthen's shop. At first, it seemed there was only one set that had been moved from the front of Luthen's shop to the back. But now, upon closer look, there are actually two sets of Sith Stalker armor. One in the front of the shop and one in the back. Two shop workers, two sets of Sith armor. Both distinctly different, but with similarities in design. This isn't to bring Starkiller back to canon. I'm sorry. It's a hint that there's something else going on with Luth and Rael and Clea. One set would have been an Easter egg. Two? That's a clue. They want us to know that armor means something. And they didn't set them side by side. They put them in separate parts of the shop. The second part comes from the 2019 canon novel Master and Apprentice, where it was revealed that Count Dooku, formerly Master Dooku of the Jedi Order, had another Apatawan by the name of Rael Avaros. Luthen Rael, Rael Avaros. Coincidence? Maybe not. Who better to have disillusioned by the Jedi Order than someone who was taught by a man already internally conflicting over the ways of the Jedi? 
Count Dooku even said in Revenge of the Sith that he wished Qui-Gon were alive. He would have joined Dooku. Why? Because Dooku trained him. Now, Luthan Rael may have been taught in the same manner, if he is Rael Avaros. We can argue and speculate as to whether Qui-Gon Jinn would have turned to join Dooku, but the fact remains, he died. But he did have a blank disregard for some of the Jedi Order's practices and logic. It's all just something to think about. Any one of these points, theories, and speculations may never come to light, and that's okay. But that's what we Star Wars fans do. We try to fill in the gap with our own version of canon. The Star Wars Andor series has given us plenty to speculate on, and there are so many small details in this show that only a visual dictionary could identify them all. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Is there something I missed? Just be respectful. This is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching. Be kind to each other. And remember, this is the way. And positivity in the Star Wars community is the only way.